Hey everybody, this is Chris at Zenoic Reptiles. Thank you for joining me once again. Let's get this started. Um, if you guys are new here, consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell. What that notification bell does for you is keeps you in the loop of all my upcoming videos. I do release videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Um, if you guys get anything from my videos, I really appreciate if you guys hit the like button. Uh, it just really helps me out. That's all I ask. Thanks. Um, so let's get started. It's a disclaimer right now. Um, I tried to get so much in one video. I kind of thought about doing a two-part video, but I was like, nah, let's make one video. So um, I try to keep my videos as short as possible. Um, I actually wanted to go down the rabbit hole a little bit further in this video, but I gotta realize this is a YouTube video, not a documentary. So um, if you guys look at my videos, I've never actually did an unboxing. I do get snakes all the time and animals all the time, but I haven't done an un unboxing because um, personally, I don't watch them, and I guess I should think about you guys. You guys probably do enjoy them. I am going to do an unboxing today because it pertains to the video um, of what I'm doing. So let's get started. I got it right here. Let's get going. Get my knife out. And I got this from Ozzy, Ozzy Boyd's. I've ordered from him before. <laughs> That's funny. He gave me some masks. That's pretty cool. They say, Aussie boys, amazing. That's cool. That's funny. Uh, let me see here. Gave me a sticker. I will definitely be placing that. Give me a couple small stickers. All right, let's get to the snake here. Nice and warm in there. Um, always does a great job of shipping. Aussie does. I can never say enough good things about Aussie. Another thing I really like that he ties the bag and doesn't to the point where you can get it open. I mean, some of the times I have a hard time getting the bag when I have to cut the bag open. It's kind of uh, frustrating. And you can see right here, what you can see right now is a pied, um, uh, pretty pied. You know me and my pieds. Um, it's not so much that the, what the pied is, it's actually what it's het for. Um, it is het ultra male. And if you guys don't know, um, if you haven't watched my videos, one of the uh, projects I'm working on right now is Pied and uh, Ultramel together. So a Pied Ultramel. And this is another one that's gonna help me get to that stage. So today I'm gonna talk about double recessives and um, how hard they are. Um, I don't want this video to discourage you at all because you're gonna see some of these uh, facts and some things on here that's gonna show you that it's kinda of hard to do. Um, but don't take it as a downer. Um, you know, it's gonna be harder for you to like say, catch up with someone like Justin Kaboka or Ozzy or uh, Billy Rose has been doing it for a long time. I don't want this to discourage you. I don't have too many double recessive projects um, on hand that I'm trying because they are hard to hit. A lot of my double recessive projects, I, do, I use Ghost, um, Pied, and also um, Genetic Stripe. The reason being is they're really cheap and you can get further along in your projects. Um, so you can actually buy them and it can set you further along. So some of the ones that uh, like these guys are working on, uh, say Justin, is really expensive to get into if you want to uh, start where they are. Um, you can start from scratch, but you know, you're gonna spend a lot of years trying to get there. And that's what I'm saying, don't get discouraged about this video. Um, actually, it should make you, <laughs> motivate you to wanna do this. Um, the reason why these snakes cost a lot of money, um, certain double recessives, is because of the time it takes to make them. And that's why that makes them worth a lot more money. It makes them worth uh, you know, the time and effort you put into them because it's a hobby that you have to spend a lot of time to, to reach your goals. A male can breed pretty fast. I've had males that bred less than a year, um, not very often. I look for around about 500 to 700 grams and I look for that sperm plug. Males are easier to get to the place you want them to be. Females on the other hand are a lot harder. I've heard people say you can breed them at 1200 grams. I personally would not, but I know people that have successfully done it. In my experience, and I also watched a video with muscle serpents, that a lot of times when they get to that 1500 gram stage, um, that first year, they will breed, but a lot of times I've had more slugs and more issues the first year. I'm not saying they're gonna die and it's unhealthy for them. What I'm saying is that that year after, they always seem to do better. Um, but don't get me wrong, I've had plenty go the first year they hit that target weight.
So again, the Pied Ultra Mount. And I'm gonna explain how hard it is to get to this double recessa. I wanted to show you all the ways to hit this goal, um, but if I did that, the video would be over an hour long. So I kind of showed you some realistic ways of getting to this goal. So first of all, let's say that you took a visual Pied and a visual Ultra Mount and you breaded them together. The average cost of the Pied, I think is around $300 to about $350. Uh, just for a visual pipe. Pipe's been around for a long time and it is pretty easy to get a hold of. Um, actually, if you look on Morph Market, it's one of the most common jeans on there. Ultra Mel, on the other hand, I've seen it anywhere from about 300 to 450. I mean, I've even seen it higher, but that seems to be the average around there. Um, Ultra Mel is a little bit harder to get. It's getting a little more popular now. Um, it used to be popular, but then the banana came and kind of every quick um, breeding them. I like the Ultra Male better than Banana, um, but the Banana is not a recessive, so it's a lot easier to hit. So if you bred those two together, um, the Visual Pied and the Visual Ultra Male, what you're gonna get is normal looking snakes that are 100% hit for Pied and 100% hit for um, Ultra Male. If you don't have a lot of money, this is the way um, you're gonna get there. Um, this is probably the cheapest way that I would probably go, especially if I was younger and I had a lot more time. Th but this is gonna take you quite a while to hit. This method could take anywhere from four to eight years. Uh, what's going to happen is you're going to grow those babies up, your head um, ultra male, head uh, pied, and, you, and you're going to bring them back together. The thing is, is you want to keep a lot of those babies because um, the way it works with snakes is that I have snakes for projects and some of my projects get put on the back burner because I buy snakes or I raise snakes and they don't eat as fast as other snakes. I have some snakes that will eat every week. I'll have snakes that will actually want to eat uh, three times a week. Not saying I do, but they're aggressive eaters and I have some that only eat about every two, three weeks. So they take years down the road to grow. So if you kept about three of those babies back, a couple of them are gonna probably grow pretty quick because they're probably gonna be good, good eaters. So you breed those back to each other and um, this is what you're gonna get. Now you see you spent six to eight years um, waiting to breed these back and you now have a chance for visuals, a slight chance, either Pied or Ultra Male. Also, you have a slight, even slighter chance of hitting your goals. It may look discouraging, but this is just the reality of hitting double recessive. It's not easy. This is how I am doing it and how I've been doing it. I've been buying Visual Pied, Het Ultra Male. They're a little bit harder to find, but I do find them here and there, and I do pick them up when I see them. Um, I don't need a billion of them, but I'd like to get you know a good head start on this. And I'll show you why I do it this way. If you can find those sub-adults or adults, that's really gonna help you out, but sometimes if they're getting rid of that kind of snake as an adult, it's kind of a question why. Um, also with Morph Market right now, I've noticed the prices have kind of gone up a little bit because of the COVID-19. I think uh, people are kind of needing a little bit more money um, and prices are a little bit higher. Also the time of year it is, um, hatchlings will start coming out a lot more. I think it's a little bit of a mix of both. Um, some of these things that I paid for a few months ago kind of gone up, but that happens um, with the Morph Market. Right now I think it's on the higher side, um, but it'll probably bounce itself back out. So if I breed a uh, Pied Het Ultra Male with another Pied Het Ultra Male, this is what I'm going to get. I'm gonna have a 100% chance of visual. What that means is um, they're gonna at least be Pied. Now I have a 25% chance of hitting what I want. The visual uh, Ultra Male and the visual Pied, still I have a slim chance. But the good thing about this is I will have visual uh, snakes that I can still sell and still make some money off of in, in, if I don't keep all of them. The Pied Ultra Male um, looks like it's averaging about 1750 on a morph market. Um, it, but this is kind of weird because this is one of those things that there's so little of them, it's, it's not very common. Um, morph together so it might be just that someone don't see anybody else having them on there so might be charging a lot more but again when you're doing this beggars can't be choosers you kind of got to get what you get so if i can find some adults um 
it might take me less time but again you're still looking about two to three years to grow up these snakes that you bought to to breed um you know so you're still taking a lot of time this is the thing about snakes and breeding ball pythons it takes time so um you have to be a patient person you have to be content with the little things every little uh every little goal you meet every little thing you have and that's why i have more than one project going and that's why all my projects are not double recessive because double recessive I've, if i only had double recessive projects i'd probably go crazy because i like the fact that some things i can hit a lot faster this is one of my long-term projects and uh i'm content of, of waiting and having uh, fun doing it The way I look at these uh, double resistor project is as a vintage car, like a 68 to 70 Dodge Charger. I would love to refurbish that. It would come down to what I could find, how much money I have, and how much time I have. If I could find one that's 80% done and I had the money to uh, buy that, I could be way further along of getting my dream car. And if I could only find one that's really damaged and I had to spend more time, um, that's what it's gonna be. When you start these double recessive projects, you're limited to what you can find and buy and also um, how much money you have. With this project, you can actually buy uh, these snakes outright and then you're at where you want to be. You can have the Pied Ultra Male and bring them back or you can buy just one Pied Ultra Male and then have the Het Ultra Male Pied and it'll actually further along your endeavors. Um, then you can start thinking about adding colors to it, like, you know, Orange Dream, um, Fire, um, down the road. Um, another thing I want to say, though, is actually when you do hit, hit your, uh, your goal, you're going to keep these snakes back. So you're also not going to be able to sell these snakes that you're all hitting. So say you hit two or you hit one, um, you're going to want to uh, keep these. So you spent all this time, about seven years or so, uh, trying to hit these goals. and. You have very little money to show for what you spend all those years. You know, after you keep the ones back, and the next time you can keep, you can start selling those babies because you won't need all of them. Now you see why that you look on more of market and you see some of these double recesses why they sell for a lot of money, and that's because someone spent this much time and effort in their life to uh, breed these. And you know, these are beautiful creations, and they spent you know years. Uh, look at someone like. Jessica Boca spent like 20 years of his life making some of these crazy creations. I mean, he couldn't just start all over again. Say he sold a snake, start all over again, and, and reach where he is now. It took him years to do that. And I think that should be exciting to you that you know, you're know you in a hobby that's gonna take time. And when you actually hit something, it's it's a, it's amazing. Um, because you know, you've actually, I've, I'm there. I hit what I wanted. Um, now I can further this. You know, it's, 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 it's a great feeling. And I don't want this video to, like again, to depress you, but I wanted to motivate you to show you the wonders of the ball python hobby. Anyways, guys, uh, check out these other videos right here. Also, hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. Anyways, guys, stay safe, stay positive. I'll see you guys later. Bye.